hello everyone hi good evening uh, a very warm good evening to all of you who have joined uh, for today's session and in today's session we are going to discuss uh, what should so this session will be bifurcated into two parts firstly i am going to discuss as to what should your entrance test preparation approach should be for christ 2021 uh, entrance examinations and in the second part we'll have another speaker uh, who would come anand sir who would come in and you know we'll tell you more about how you should prepare yourself for coastal interview and your micro presentation round uh, to all the iims students uh, we after the session ends we have already circulated a google form for all of you to fill in and uh, basing upon the details that you give from tomorrow onwards uh, your centers your respective ims centers will start calling you up asking for a feasible time for you when you would be wanting a personal interview uh, a mock personal interview preference would of course firstly be given to students who are appearing on 21st of march because that needs to be done uh, immediately for them uh, if you are attempting the examination a little later while a, a little uh, later that is completely okay we will any which way be scheduling your mocks at a later point in time so no rush so don't worry to all the ims students your mock personal interview would be done by your mentors so nothing to worry about but in today's session firstly let us understand how you should be prepared for the entrance test as well as how you should be prepared for your mock personal interview there after you give a mock personal interview and then you'll be ready for the final interview round or the micro presentation round as well so uh, a very good evening to everyone once again i think a lot of students have already joined in uh, all right so my name is vibhav prakash and uh, i am a lead mentor working with ims uh, undergrad india so i have been training students for various competitive entrance examinations for the past 4 years now and uh, today my part would be when i would be training you i would be telling you as to how you should be approaching the entrance test because getting into christ is a two fold uh, approach or is 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 a two fold war that you will have to fight one is clearing the entrance round clearing the written test round once you clear the written test round then comes the second battle wherein you will have to appear before a micro presentation as well as a personal interview once you clear both these rounds then you get into christ uh, college be it bangalore or any other you know in, in any other campus that you might have chosen for yourself uh, so considering these two things so in today's session we are going to discuss the entrance test preparation approach as well as uh, we will also be discussing your uh, how you should be preparing yourself for micro presentation and how you should prepare yourself for mock personal interview uh, and towards the fag end to the ones who would stay till the end we would also give you a list of topics for micro presentation which you can think of or which you can use it as a cue uh, in order to you know prepare yourself a little better and have an edge over others who have absolutely no uh, preparation whatsoever with respect to uh, the the micro presentation round right so that is the brownie point that you are going to get towards the end all right starting off uh, with the first and the foremost important thing is to understand what is the exam pattern like for christ 2021 now if we talk about bcom bba in finance uh, you know uh, bachelor's in hotel management etc these courses you have six subjects that they are going to ask you equal weightage to all the subjects mathematics data analysis and interpretation logical reasoning gk general knowledge english and fundamental accounting so these are the six subjects on which bcom bba in finance and accounting uh, hotel management courses will be asked or you know uh, they would be asking you questions from these six areas and the total number of questions would be 120 important to important thing to be understood here is christ has a negative marks right so they have a negative marks which means you cannot take up all or you cannot attempt all the questions you will have to be very careful with your overall attempts now if we if we talk about different variations of bba like bba 
BBA honors or BBA in finance and investment banking, et cetera, et cetera. Different variations of BBA. They again ask you six subjects, but the weightage changes here. Now, fundamental accounting is only of 10 marks for BBA courses and English as well as reasoning increases. Uh, so uh, the marks in English as well as reasoning increases by five in each segment. So mathematics, data analysis and interpretation remains 20, GK remains 20, fundamental accounting becomes 10 and English and reasoning, logical reasoning becomes 25 each. So again, taking the overall score to 120. Now, if we talk about the law entrance program, uh, be it for a BBA LLB or a BA LLB, then they have only five subjects that they're going to ask you. They will have a separate section for static GK and they will have a separate section for current affairs. Current affairs will be 15 marks. General knowledge will be 30 marks. So 45 out of 120 questions would be your general knowledge based questions. Then you will have data analysis and interpretation, something like a mathematics data interpretation, 20 marks. You will have logical reasoning of 25 marks and you will have uh, English language of 30 marks. Th thereafter taking again uh, the entire score to 120, right? Uh, important thing to be understood is that in all these exams, in all these, uh, you know, whatever courses that we discussed, Christ has a negative marks. So don't be under an assumption that you will take all the questions, you'll, you'll hit all the questions and come back because you can't do that because there's a negative mark for each question that goes wrong for you, right? So now having understood the pattern, let us understand as to what, what are we supposed to study now? Now, should we pick up our books and should we start with all the topics? Absolutely no. What you should be doing is you should be brushing up. And again, this, this I'm saying, considering and uh, stating that a lot of you might be attempting the March examination. See, there, there's a good part about attempting the March examination. And the good part is that it, it even if you do not score well, or even if you, uh, you, know, you, you make certain blunders, you learn for the other attempts that you can take at a later point in time. So this, this can act as a practice match for you. The 21st March attempt can be a practice match for you. No problem. You can directly be prepared for the other two attempts towards the end, right? So what should we be doing right now? We should be brushing up our concepts from the learn module part A of IMS books. Plus you should refer to your concept videos, which are available as well as your class recordings, which are available on your uh, my IMS portal or your live portal, which IMS provides you. Secondly, you should be solving your practice B, uh, you know, practice book part B, because that is going to give you that exam level preparation, that seriousness, that higher or difficulty level questions, which you would be expecting in the examination is something which you can get in your part B practice module book. You will only reach the good score in mocks before the exams. If you start taking the mocks because, and let me tell you, this is the high time or this is a very high time that you start taking uh, Christ mocks because until unless you take mocks, you do not realize, uh, you know, what your mistakes are. And unless you realize how you're performing in an overall setup, you will never have a advantage when you go to the exam center or your, Again, Christ, you don't have to go to the exam center. You'll be taking it from your home itself. It's a home doctored test. So when you'd be sitting there and you'd be taking the test, you would you would not have a lot of idea as to how you should be approaching the examination. So therefore, taking that box become very important. So right now, your preparation strategy should be that you take at least a few mocks before appearing for the final examination. Now, just or merely taking the mocks is not going to help you improve your score. What you do between the mocks is something which will improve your score. So sit with your mistakes. That's more important, right? So why should we be taking the mocks? Uh, one, to test your readiness by attempting a full length paper in a time bound manner, which will give you a confidence or a set of understanding as to how are you performing to understand and get familiar with as to how do you, or how does your brain react when there's a when there are difficult questions or when there are easy questions, how do you react to it? So 
you get to assess your strengths and your weaknesses when you start taking the final or when you start taking a full length walk so in in few days weeks whatever uh, you know you are coming i understand few of you might have your pre boards uh, your boards might be coming up but again taking up these mock tests would not take a lot of time take out sneak out some time for your preparation and uh, you know sit with your mistakes so the textbook approach is not going to help you uh, at all and uh, what you should be doing is uh, taking up mocks and seeing where you stand and where your preparation uh, lacks and the areas of the prep, uh, the areas where you feel that you lack is something that you should be targeting before the examination now what is the way ahead for dba bcom aspirants as well as for law aspirants let me let me bifurcate here for both of uh, for both the you know segments of students who are present in today's session now if you are a bba or a bcom or any management uh, aspirant management course aspirant if you are taking the 21st march attempt <clears throat> take at least two christ mocks which are already available on your ug my ims portal actually there are three which are already live for you but before the 21st march take at least two christ mocks which are available like i said sit with your mistakes in these mocks and understand what are the areas that you should be revising before the 21st march attempt now second comes the law aspirants uh, so we have launched a mock for you today at around 8 pm we have launched if it has not been launched it will be so tomorrow or any time after tomorrow you can take a mock before your 21st march attempt make sure that you take it in a day or two because you need some time to figure out your weak areas so that you can brush up and you can revise those areas before your 21st march attempt right please note that christ law examination does not have a legal aptitude section for and this is i'm saying for the law aspirants so you don't have legal aptitude so don't get back or do, do not take back or, or take up your books legal aptitude books and start reading that would just be a futile waste of your time and efforts right so take up a mock see what are the areas that you lack upon and target those topics before your 21st march attempt the same strategy goes well even for a later day examination as and when uh, you would be taking as according to whatever preference you would have filled by filling up the christ form right now the so just giving a quick uh, update about the mock schedule which are available for bba uh, aspirants and for law aspirants uh, mock test 1 to 3 are already live on your ug uh, my ims portal and uh, fourth mock test would be live on 18th of march so two days from now it, uh, another mock would be launched closer to 21st uh, march attempt for uh, uh, law aspirants mock first mock test would be launched uh, today itself in case there is some delay uh, because of some technical issues it would be done by tomorrow so don't panic don't worry just check your law uh, my ims portal and it would be there right so that is what your mock schedule looks like for law aspirants you don't have to take a lot of mocks because you are already prepared uh, for through your clat mocks ailet mocks uh, your uh, slat mocks you are already prepared enough to take up christ uh, you know uh, to take up the cri or, or rather face that challenge of uh, christ entrance examination now what you do before each mock is you know make something like this a table now this table is important because it will give you an idea as to what aspirations have you set for yourself and whether you have reached that aspiration in that particular uh, subject or not so for example so i write the maximum score for verbal ability so for example uh, you know we are taking that bcom test where everything is 20 marks so i say verbal ability maximum score is 20 gk current affairs is 20 reasoning is 20 maths di is uh, 20 and 20 right so i i say that this is the maximum marks what are my current marks if in case i have taken some previous mocks what are my current marks in this if you have not taken koi baat nahi leave this blank what is your target score how much are you targeting out of 20 or say for example if i say maths and di is 40 uh, then how much am i targeting out of 40 is it that my aspiration is 30 is it my aspiration is 25 is it my aspiration uh, 28 you write your target score then you write your target attempts as to how much attempt are you going to make in the mock so that 
uh, you reach to your target score, whatever you have decided, because there's a negative mark. Then the last three, the last three columns is something which you fill after the mock. So, uh, you know, you would be filling your final score uh, and it would give you an idea whether you have reached your aspirational score or you have not reached the aspirational score. Then you see what was your target time, which you had set for yourself for each section and actual time that you took for that section. So this will overall, this table is overall going to help you understand a lot of things about yourself as to where are you wasting your time, which section needs urgent and immediate attention. And once you know, and once you realize that, okay, reasoning is something, or maybe GK current affairs is something which needs urgent attention. So I need to focus on that subject more rather than focusing on English reasoning, which are any which way my strong areas and I'm doing decently well because I'm matching to my aspirational score. Uh, math and GK current affairs is something which I need to focus upon because if I don't, uh, I'm going to lose out on a lot of marks. So focus and work on those areas. Considering that if you have set your target time and you know that this is the time limit that you have set for yourself. And if you are exceeding that time limit, you, you will get an idea and you will uh, have a fair bit of understanding how to manage it better when you take the next mock or when you take the final entrance test, right? Now, what do you do after each mock? Once you have populated the final score, you do that. That's the most important. Compare your target scores and your final score and see which areas do you lack in. Review each and every test question. Like go to the same test, click on review, sit with your mistakes. That's the most important thing. Until unless you sit with your mistakes, you will not remember them for future. Once you sit with your mistakes, once you realize where did you go wrong, what areas do you, you know, need to work upon is that analysis of your performance, right? That which areas am I losing marks on? Now, once I know that, say, for example, uh, say blood relation is something in logical reasoning, which where I'm losing marks. So that is one topic which I've realized I need to brush up. Now I go back to the concepts, topics from the study material, section tests. I take those tests. I solve those questions again. And then maybe, you know, I take the next one or I say, okay, okay, let me, let me take the final attempt of the entrance examination. So your final score, which you have seen in the section wise becomes your current score in the next test, right? Now your incremental score. So for example, out of 120, if you are uh, sitting at say 80, you are scoring 80 out of 120. Now for the next test, you can't go with, you, you can't be like, yeah, I'll score 105 or 110. It won't, it, it does not work that way. So try for an incremental score by increasing it by 10 to 15 marks. So try going to 1995. Very, very important thing to be noted here is that the Christ University, the exam conducting authorities do not reveal the score cutoffs. So it is very difficult to give you a safe ballpark figure as to what, what is, how much should you be scoring or what should be your score that you should be targeting. It's very difficult to say. Two reasons, Christ does not release its past year paper. Second, it does not also release its cutoff. So you don't know as to who scored how much and what was the kind of the question paper. IMS mocks are very, very close to your, uh, the final paper, right? So you will have to have that trust and take those mocks. To be on a safer side, consider 65 to 70 percent of the total marks as a safe score for getting a call for micro presentation and personal interview. So, in your 120 mark paper, your aim should be to score somewhere around 65 to 70 percent of 120 so that you get a call for micro presentation and personal interview. So, this is something which you should always keep in mind, right? See. When you're taking an exam, you have two roles. One is that of a worker where you're working, your mind is working. Second is the role of a manager where, you know, you have to manage, you have to manage your efforts. You have to manage your time. You have to manage both the efforts as well as time to get to the best score possible for you. Now, how do I do this? 
So this leads up to a follow-up question that which question should I attempt to maximize my scores? How can I save my efforts? How can I save my time to get to a maximum score? And the answer is as simple as an ABC. Now, let me first explain to you quickly as to what ABC is. So ABC is type of questions. There are three types of questions. A type of question which is easy, which needs to be solved immediately because it will take you less than 60 seconds of time to solve them. So focus first on A set questions. All the A set questions in the paper should be solved immediately and first. Then comes a second type of question which you feel, ki, okay, this is something which I have done. I know, but it is going to take me more than one minute per question to solve. I can do this definitely, but it is going to take me some time. So you leave them, you mark them and you leave them for a later point in time. Then comes the third kind of question, which are difficult and time consuming. You may be able to score, you may be able to, you know, solve that entire set of questions uh, absolutely correctly, but you spent 10 minutes of your time doing that. It makes no sense. So if there are three questions, you get three marks, but you waste 10 minutes makes no sense. Rather, I would use that 10 minutes to work upon those questions, which will take me a minute or less than a minute. So overall that will help me to manage my time better. And I would definitely be scoring more than three in that 10 minutes. So if I, if I look at a comparison of whether the first when I solved only three questions in 10 minutes or the second where I solved say a seven questions in 10 minutes, my score would any which way at any given day be higher than the second one. So utilize your time better and this is how you do it better. So ABC is something which you have to follow. So A is abhi karo immediately. B is baad mein karunga. I'll do it a, a little later. C is chhod do. Leave it. Even if you solve that question, you're not going to be awarded with Nobel Prize or an Abel Prize. You just get one mark. So leave it. Don't make it an ego issue that how will this question not be solved by me? Never make that mistake. If you do that, it would be just a spiral where you'd be losing out on a lot of things. Now, how to use it in earlier mocks? So for all the tests that you have taken so far, it could be a module test. It could be a Christ mock test. It could be for some other mock test. Regardless, whatever you have done, whatever previous mocks that you have taken, sit with those mocks and see if you have a high A's or a high B's or a high C's. How do you do that? So you see what were the easy questions which you could have solved quickly. So you say that out of 120 questions, uh, say 60 questions were easy. Now out of those 60, how many were you able to solve and how many were you able to clear it? Uh, how many you, how, how many were you able to, uh, you know, solve correctly out of all those 60? Now, if that your A's are high, if out of 60, you say you score somewhere out of 50 or a 45 to somewhere between 45 to 50, then you have a high A, which means that your concepts are good. Just ensure that you are using your time well during the test. If you have a high B, so you knew that, okay, I knew this concept, but I could not have complete, I could not complete it. I could not, you know, it took me a little more time. Your concepts are good, but your timing is something where you're lacking. So try working on okay, how could you convert few B's into A's so that you could solve them quickly and maximize your marks in a shorter duration. And if you have a high C's, like for example, out of, uh, say for example, out of 120, you know, there were 60, 65 questions that you could not understand, you could not attempt, you had no clue about. That means you need to work upon your concepts. So you'll have to give double efforts right from now. Maybe not for the 21st March attempt, but maybe for the later dates attempt, you will have to start pushing yourself uh, as much as you can if you have a high C's, right? Now, how do you implement this in upcoming mocks? Uh, 
again get accurate classification for every question while you are taking the question you can keep a rough sheet uh, right beside you uh, already write 1 to 120 and uh, maybe what you can do is just write a b c a b c whatever you feel that this question is a b c or whatever and once you done once you are classifying it you keep solving it after the mock is done you sit again and see whether you got the classifications right or not because every time you get the classification right your confidence builds and that is something which will be implementing in the final entrance test also and that is something which is going to take a save a lot of time uh, in your test and will maximize your marks and again if in case there was some mismatch so you marked some question as a b but it should ideally uh, it it should ideally have been a c like you should have left that question then see where did you go wrong or why did you go wrong at that point in time so that you do not commit the same mistake while classification in the final entrance test right that is how you will have to practice and guys again this is something which is new for you and you need to practice unless you practice it this way you would not be comfortable doing it now how do you do uh, you know abc is get accurate at classification you will have to practice take a sectional test take a topic test using the abc approach keep a record of your classifications of each test that you keep doing after the test you know sit see how many a's were correct how many b's were correct how many c's were correct the classification how many classifications were correct right that is what you are supposed to do and that is something which will give you confidence to approach it in the uh, in the final exam as well right so on this note uh, i come to an end of my part now the second part which is very very important is how to prepare yourself uh, for your mock personal uh, sorry, sorry so how to prepare yourself for your micro presentation as well as your personal interview is something which uh, anand sir is going to take that session uh, i will be handing over uh, the entire session to anand sir so that he can uh, continue listen to him very carefully i understand you a lot of you might have a lot of uh, you know queries questions concerns which i can see in the you know chat box as well of uh, the youtube don't worry i will be there i'm sitting there i'll try to address as many questions as i can uh, even if not we will be addressing your questions so don't worry listen to sir very carefully and again remember towards the end for everyone who sits right to the end you get a brownie thing uh, a brownie point where we'll be sharing some list of micro presentation topics but that will happen only after anand sir sessions end right so i think i would hand it over to uh, anand sir now hello i uh, think of all the people attending are uh, except for one name that i cannot recognize uh, my children right anyway um so what i'm going to do this is thank you vibha um i'm going to take it from here after you finish the test those of you who get selected uh, it used to be that earlier uh, they used to call everybody who had written the test for a process called a micro presentation and interviews and of late um, from last year they're calling only a select number of people it's not very difficult so let me answer one question which was asked by shreyas um, while vipav's presentation was going on and it was that he asked me is that uh, material that ims gave last year for gk is enough now please understand um, many of the questions of gk are going to come from events which have happened in the last 6 months or one year static gk can be from anywhere so the preparation for a test which has gk should not be done on the eve of the test in the first place i think shreya should know better than anybody else because you are my student you are from here right so i've been telling you that gk preparation is an ongoing process that you should actually keep in touch with the news and you should look at it with a little more care than normal because it's not only general awareness that we are looking at we are looking at specific names places figures and therefore you need to look at it a little carefully but then what you can do is uh, you can actually brush up with the current events with any of the gk magazines that you would have purchased because i have asked you to purchase that over the last 3 or 4 months 
static is open there is nothing that you can do for static except maybe brush up from a couple of areas static could be from history static could be from constitution static could be from uh, uh, let us say uh, uh, science you know so you know like there is nothing much you can do for that uh, there is nothing much you can do because you can prepare 10000 questions and you may get another 20 questions which are not from that 10000 as well so you need to do your best over there anyway all right with that let me get to the topic the topic is the second stage which is they call it a skill analysis skill estimation skill analysis or something plus they say that there is going to be a micro presentation and an interview uh, as far as uh, the skill assessment is what they call it as far as skill assessment is concerned there is nothing much i mean i think that the skill assessment is done during the interview process itself i'll come to that because there's only two processes involved and one is a micro presentation and the second one is an interview now let me talk with a micro presentation a set of topics is going to be given these are the topics which they have given in the website of christ itself um they normally don't give it for undergraduate students they give it for their mba students and the undergraduate students are asked questions from the same topics every year it has been the same right so i'm giving you a edited version of that some of it is specific for mba which i have edited out so i've given you the other topics which are very common now there are about i'm going to give you something like 70 topics today after my class you can actually get that on the uh, site you know like um, you know, if you can ask for it uh, we'll try to see whether it can be sent to you with, through various groups as well the question comes in how do i prepare for 70 topics do i need to read upon these 70 topics it's again pretty much impossible and the topics range from very specific topics to very general topics as well so before i talk about how to approach the topics itself let me tell you what is expected of you as far as a micro presentation is concerned now some of you might even go for symbiosis uh, test later and if you are selected symbiosis also goes through an interview process and during that interview they call it differently they don't call it micro presentation they call it an extempore presentation they just give you a topic out of the hat you know you will not get any inkling as to what the topic is they would just give you the topic it will be something which is very contemporary something which is being discussed something which is there in the in the uh, in the papers and uh, in the current affairs news and and they would ask you to speak on that so the micro presentation session that i'm about to tell you is also going to stand you in good stead when it comes to a symbiosis process as well now what is expected of you is very simple let's not get scared about this term micro presentation it's an entirely oral presentation you know as well as the only thing that they are looking at is whether you speak english well it's a test of your fluency more than anything else christ has a big preference for people who are fluent uh, when it comes to both bba and law especially for law but even for bba they want people who are very fluent when i talk about very fluent do i mean that your english has to be syntactically correct grammatically accurate not necessarily but of course you can't fumble either you can use short sentences it does not matter you need to appear confident so let me tell you this this is not a test of your skill with the english language or your ability to 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 actually construct sentences grammatically correctly it is a test to see whether you're fluent enough when i talk about fluent i mean confident the fluent the word fluent f l u e n t the flu itself the f l u is a word for latin for flow so we are talking about the words flowing out of your mouth they don't have to be grammatically perfect but of course uh, most of you can speak well i know so it should not be an issue at all but what you need to understand is it should be relevant to the topic and the usual experiences 
the time that they have given, they have specified for the micro presentation is 90 seconds, which is one and a half minutes. But my experience is that um, uh, it is a completely different thing if you're called to Bangalore um, and this takes place as a separate process in a separate room other than the interview. But uh, this is going to be online this year. And if it is going to be online this year, my experience is that um, the moment you start talking, when you complete two sentences and they know that you're talking something relevant to the topic, you don't have to be brilliant. You don't have to be extremely logical. You are not presenting a debate over here. You are not presenting an argument over here. You are just expressing your thoughts on the subject given. I'll give you examples. Uh, thoughts on the subject given. That's the only thing that you are doing. Your thoughts on the subject. And how do you present it? Do you come forward and say that with a little bit of confidence, without fumbling too much, if you talk on the subject, if you finish two sentences, the general experience is that they would say, all right, and they will go on with the interview because the interview and the micro presentation are going to be in the same session if it's online. In the case of offline presentations, uh, which is not going to be the, the case this year, uh, normally uh, they, they, they might listen to you for maybe about 20 seconds or 30 seconds more, nothing more than that. So having said that, keep the fear out of your mind. You're not being assessed for your eloquency. You're not being assessed for your um, uh, knowledge on the topic on which you are presenting. Of course, you have to talk something relevant to the topic, something which is logical uh, as far as the topic is concerned. But otherwise, let's be very clear, they are not there to assess whether you are a, are, are a brainiac here who is actually coming out with fantastic points on the topic given. They just want to see a person who is confident, who is able to speak. And generally, two sentences and three sentences, which will be about 30, 35, 40 seconds, the general experience is that they would say, all right. So when we prepare for it, see, the question is, are you going to prepare on all the 70 topics I give you? The normal thing is, Christ gives you these 70 topics. Uh, at the end of the day, they have a pet three or four topics which are normally asked, which will be very common topics anyway. And please remember, even if you smug up on these 70 topics, please remember that they can always come out with one which is not there in the list. And you cannot tell them this. I have had one experience, but I'm not telling you to do this, of one student last year who said that, can you give me another topic? And they gave him, but that depends on the interview panel. So don't stretch your luck too far over there. They may say no, and that's not going to be a very pleasant experience if you ask and they say no. And then what happens is that you start panicking and that will reflect in the interview throughout. Normally, this is done as the first part of the interview. So what happens is that the interview itself will turn out to be a mess. So don't try to do it. Last time someone did and um, it was given to that person. And I think in that particular panel, uh, the, the micro presentation came somewhere in the middle of the interview and not in the beginning. Many people had it in the beginning. So at the end of the day, you need to speak something on the topic. And I don't think they would give you topics which are totally outside your sphere of uh, knowledge anyway. I mean, you are expected to know things which are relevant to uh, current affairs you are, uh, and, and some things which are very common. Let me put it this way. Uh, they have uh, one of the topics which is given over there is um, um, the topic of um, uh, youth and politics. You know, youth and politics, that's one of the topics given. Don't think that it will be the politics which is given to you. All you have to do is to speak two lines on that. You say that, you know, like youth has an active role to play in politics. And if you actually look at that, countries across the world, the people who actually are in the hems, if you take the countries, there may be exceptions, uh, like uh, United States elected somebody who is in their 70s, but there are several countries in which people who are much younger have come to power. You can talk about the fact that Trivandrum, uh, which is a city in India, which had their local elections uh, a few months ago, and you would have possibly read in the newspaper, I think you should have read in the newspaper you uh, should have in the sense that you know if you didn't that means that you're missing out on a lot of news uh, they selected a 21 year old as a 22 year old as the mayor in Trivandrum. now then you talk about the fact that youth has an active role to play but you can also say that there should also be people who are older because experience also matters a lot now how long have i been talking on the subject 
I've been talking on the subject for approximately two and a half minutes, right? You require three lines on this topic. That is all. Three lines on this topic, right? Satya Shruti, I think you know this is not an IMS Coimbatore session. Uh, don't type that. I know, right? So basically, what I'm trying to tell you is when you given a topic like youth and politics, just you can't prepare for that. Just think about the fact and say that, yes, there is a major role to be played. And please understand that voting rights are given to you when you are 18 years old. And that actually means that anybody who is more than 18, 18 or more than 18, is expected to have a thorough political knowledge about the situation in the country and should also have an understanding of the various political parties and the ideologies by which the various political parties stand by. So if you start talking like this, you understand what I'm trying to say. Three lines on that topic. Just you want to take a breath, two breaths, three breaths, count to five in your mind. You can do anything. You can ask the person, can I take 20 seconds to think, sir? I think they will give you. Ask this only if the topic is something that you have a starting trouble with. But please understand, topics like this which are given will not be very different. You know, travel industry during the pandemic, this year's issue. You know, like what is there to be talked about over there? Travel industry during the pandemic suffered horribly. In fact, it has not recovered yet. And which are the industries associated with the travel industry? Tourism and travel, airline industry, transportation industry, hospitality industry, um, several people who have shops in um, tourist places who actually live by uh, their sale that they make to the tourists who come into the places in which they have shops. They have lost their means of livelihood and it is a really bad thing. And therefore, you know, like it should be started and the best way to start it would be to get the vaccination process speeded up. That is all. What is there to talk about it other than that? You know, you're not expected to give an essay on that. Three lines on that. And then you say, say that travel industry consists of transportation, hospitality, etc. That itself will make the people who interview you think, all right, this person knows something. Not that knows something is only one part, a smaller part. It is in your language. You know, how do you express yourself? You don't have to be, if you really speak well, go ahead and do it. If you don't speak in simple sentences, that is all. You know, the kind of topic they have given are pretty bland anyway. Uh, there are topics which are pretty uh, topics on which we probably can go on speaking for hours. For instance, banking frauds and rising non-performing assets. At least Coimbatore students would know that. I've been taking this as part of your general awareness sessions for nearly a year now. Uh, and you understand, you know, at least you can talk about Vijay Malia here. You can talk about Neeram Modi here. You can talk about the fact that rising NPAs are a big issue. And that is one reason, other than the fact that the government needs money, Money that the government has decided to privatize a few public sector units. You know, I have spoken four sentences on this. You need to speak four sentences on this. That is all. So do not worry about the micro presentation at all. Now, what if you get a topic from outside that you are not aware about? That, that should not come. But if you cannot speak a single line on that, if you cannot think a single point on that, then you can ask them, sir, can you give me another topic? Because you don't have an alternative. But don't do it as much as possible. So topics like that, um, EVMs versus paper ballots. EVMs here, you know what it means. Uh, electronic voting machines. Uh, you should know because you're expected to know if you're going to do a BBA course uh, uh, in a college like right, they expect you to know what an EVM is. It's an electronic voting machine and uh, versus paper ballot. You know, the pluses and minuses, electronic voting machines have a lot of pluses. In fact, they are very little minuses. The only minuses that some people accuse, uh, particularly people who lose elections, accuse the election commission is that these machines are hacked. 
which cannot be possible because these machines are not connected to the internet in any way. To hack a machine, you need to connect it to the internet. Somebody needs to access the machine. That cannot be done. If the machine is wired wrong, that you press a button, another vote falls, is not going to be the case. You know that there is something called paper trails, which means that there is a paper printout, which will clearly show which is the button that you have pressed. So a person can verify that paper trail immediately. So, you know, like, other than that, uh, paper ballots, paper ballots are ancient, but paper ballots have many negatives in the sense that paper ballots are, first of all, paper ballots, please remember, is environmentally uh, much more. I mean, that's a smaller uh, factor, but it's environmentally because so much of paper is being used. And number two is paper ballots can be easily be manipulated because you don't know who puts in. So there is something called election ballot stuffing, which used to take place in states like Bihar. People just come in and take out a lot of ballots, start stamping their uh, candidates uh, uh, against the name. They start stamping the, the, the particular stamp that they give you. It used to be a stamp earlier. And then they fold it and stuff it into with people watching by. You cannot do it with an electronic machine. You cannot keep pressing because the electoral officer has to release that. And there is a button which says that he is under duress. So there is a secret button. So the whole machine becomes inactive. So. Why did I speak so much on that? Do you have to speak so much on that? Not at all. Two lines, which is better, in my opinion. If Let me put it to you. How do you present it very simply? It's EVMs versus paper ballots. Uh, EVM stands for electronic voting machines. And paper ballots used to be the system by which elections were held in India many years ago. And EVMs were chosen because they are much more convenient and they're much more easy. And if you look at something like counting, it can be done pretty fast. Paper ballots take days to count. And then you can say, uh, OK, let me put it to you that if you are a student, how would you speak? You say the electronic voting machines are always better because they are more modern. And electronic voting machines ensure that there is no manipulation done as can be done with paper ballots. And in paper ballots, many of the votes can actually turn out to be um, what is called as invalid votes because even the paper, if you fold it wrongly, uh, it will uh, actually smudge onto the other side and will become invalid. Paper ballot is always an old system and we switched over to electronic voting machines in order to be more modern. And the only accusation against electronic voting machine is that it can be hacked, which cannot be done simply because it is not wired. It is not connected to any other. Uh, you require an internet connection basically for that or any other connection for that, which it does not have. That's all. So talk about micro presentation. Just think about the topic. You don't have really time for jotting down. You can ask them for 30 seconds. If you want to, you can ask them for 30 seconds. Um, and then quickly jot down three points. Or even while they give you the topic, just say, can I take a moment, sir? Write down the three, three lines on the topic and start talking. Don't read the lines, but start talking, looking at the camera. Start talking. And I'm very sure that two lines later, they would say that, let's go for the interview. Please understand, let me repeat this once more. A micro presentation is no big deal. Don't be scared of it. And number two, they are assessing whether you speak English decently, fluently. And number three, are you talking something relevant to the topic given? That is all that is required in micro presentation. Uh, there are topics which are specific and it doesn't mean that they're going to give you these topics, but you can always go through this 70 topics. You can always go through if you want to, because you get about three or four days, even after the test, I think you get three or four days for this and you can prepare. But what if they give you something outside? They can always give you something from outside, but I don't think it will be that difficult for you to speak on, even if they give you something from outside. Digital detoxing, another topic. Digital detoxing means what? Detoxing generally is a word used by health uh, experts, fitness experts to say that your body has to be detoxed from time to time. And they suggest various means, uh, different kinds of diets or even fasting, etc. Digital toxin. So you, if you want to speak on it, digital detoxing, talk about the word detoxing. And talk about the detoxing the way I talk to you, which is about to get rid of toxins from your 
but 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 digital detoxing what we mean is that our addiction to the digital equipment that we have around you and it is becoming a, a major issue we, we are addicted to this we all know this and uh, people are addicted to gaming people are even addicted to texting each other whatsapp is a kind of a craze um, instagram you need to snap a photo and then put it on like all this becomes a kind of a this thing and therefore experts suggest to keep your mental health it is better from time to time to to spend maybe a few hours or a few days not going to be possible maybe a few hours away from these equipment in order to digital detox that is all two lines talk what detoxing is talk what digital detoxing is that will do so i'm not going to talk about 70 topics again and that is going to take a lot of time for us and um, uh, is india safe for women uh, i don't know whether you know that uh, uh, united kingdom london is going through a very tough time I, i'm not going to get into that a woman has been killed and a policeman has been arrested of stalking her and um, murdering her for the details have not come out yet uh, so we don't know whether she has been subject to subjected to sexual uh, violence we don't know that but the fact is that even in london uh, you know like if 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 women are not safe you can understand what their situation would be talk about nirbhaya uh, talk about uh, the fact that the society uh, actually blames a girl who gets out after a certain time in the evening etc for that topic right so is india safe for women you can definitely say that no that is because of the societal norms that we have set down and uh, 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 the way that you can give examples for that there are many examples you have the hathras uh, uh, rape case where um, uh, the the woman went in for uh, two women i think they they went in for um, uh, uh, picking up uh, firewood and they were raped etc right global warming now now if you get topics like that will be brilliant but i have a feeling that you get topics like that more than topics like india is india safe for women global warming i mean you can go on for hours for that about that topic and then topic like covid 19 effect on e commerce that's a positive effect on e commerce remember because you can't go to the shops you buy things online so things like that i'll give you the entire topics a little later why if i would give it a little later where are we now micro presentation one more summing up and then i'm going to get into the interview part one more summing up all you need to do is to be confident quickly jot down three points if you can otherwise think three points in your mind and then just talk be confident just talk if you want to take a breath if you want a little bit of time before that you can ask them uh, in symbiosis they may not give you that much of a time it's extempore and therefore they may give you about 5 seconds or 10 seconds but here since it's a micro presentation you can ask them can you can you don't take an inordinate amount of time don't take don't take a minute and all that uh, say that can i take about 30 seconds sir i'm very sure that they would allow you and just think about the points and you can also get permission from them if you want to jot down if you have a piece of paper in front of you uh, you're going to look down so you definitely need permission from the interview panel please remember that if you're looking down otherwise they should not think that you're googling for that right so it is better that you tell them that sir i have a piece of paper here can i just note down a couple of points some interview panel you know like they like uh, stress interview so they would say possibly no in which case smile and say all right and then think about the points in your mind but when i say jot down the points it's not mandatory uh, it is better not to because there's always the danger that they probably would think when you look down that you are googling for the topic so let's not uh, have that um, you can tell them that i have a piece of paper show them the piece of paper and say can i jot down two points but again i'm telling you do that only if it is absolutely necessary do that only if the topic is so complex that you require a little bit of time otherwise keep it in your mind jot the points in your mind and speak right so that's about the micro presentation let's get into the interview let's understand something the interview uh, interview and micro presentation the time which is given the website of christ is 10 minutes which means that assuming that they have set aside one and a half minutes for the micro presentation and they will not take that much of time they'll take only one third of that time let's assume that your interview will go on for anywhere between 7 minutes to 9 minutes 10 minutes maximum 
any interview of 10 minutes is a structured interview and you need to understand first what is it that interviewers look at um, when, when they interview a candidate. It's not whether you answer every single question well, that obviously helps. They look at the overall experience. So if there is one question that you cannot answer, it doesn't really matter. Don't lose your cool. Go for the next question. A series of questions that you cannot answer becomes an issue, but that normally comes in only when these questions are on your subjects. But the questions are not on your subjects. Why should you not know the answer to that anyway? Okay, so let me tell you, how do you prepare for any interview? It's not only for Christ. Consists of three areas. One will be about yourself. You know, that starts with an introduction. Very rarely, they may not ask you for the introduction and they'll go directly for the interview. But generally, for undergraduate students, uh, interviews for undergraduate admissions, uh, they don't do that. They normally ask you for an introduction. All right. You need to prepare for an introduction. I'll come to that. So you need to introduce yourself. That is about you. Then please remember that you would have filled up an application form, which possibly would be there with the interviewer. And they would look at the place from which you have come. They look at the school or the college that you have studied. They may look at uh, um, uh, uh, the subjects that you have studied. And of course, here in BBA, uh, law, it could be different. But in BBA, I think most of you would be from Commerce Stream. Rarely, there would be science students coming in, etc. Um, the questions can only come from that. So if you come from, let us say, if you come from Bangalore, the questions would be on Bangalore. You can expect questions on Bangalore. They would not ask you anything on Delhi because you're not from Delhi. So your background will determine the kind of personal questions that you get. It starts with an introduction. And then they might ask you as to why you want to do BBA or why do you want to do law? This session is for both. Uh, the micro presentation is obviously the same for both, okay? And uh, they may ask you, why do you want to do law or why do you want to do your BBA? You should have an answer for that. And then they would ask you questions which are related to you, which could be as simple as what is the meaning of your name to about your school, about your town, about your father's profession, anything. This comes under the about you part of the interview. That is the first part of the interview and therefore performing well is important here because first impressions always are the best impressions. And how do I prepare for that is very simple. One, prepare a good introduction for yourself. I would not want you to mug this up. I would not want you to deliver this as if you are giving a speech. Remember, when it comes to a micro presentation, you can make it like a speech. But when it comes to the interview, talk in the normal tone of conversation that you have. Normal tone of conversation, right? And then prepare an introduction about yourself in the normal tone. Make a note of what are the things that you want to say over there, but let it not look as if it is mugged up. It should not be mugged up. But you should have a clear idea as to what you're going to say, which starts with, I am so and so. And I am doing my 12th standard um, in, in, in um, uh, accountancy, commerce, economics group from uh, uh, this school. And I am from this city. And then uh, we say that I am from a small family. My father is this and my mother is a homemaker or she is working. And uh, then you talk about my hobbies, my interests. Is there an achievement that you can actually proudly present to them? Have you been a school leader? Are you very good in sports? Are you very good in extracurricular activities? Have you won any scholarships earlier? All this, an achievement of yours, should come at the end of the introduction. If you have, if you don't have, think about what positive aspects that you can present. Are you an avid reader? Present, I'm an avid reader. Now, if you're not an avid reader, please don't say it because the interviewer is going to ask you questions on that and you should be able to answer it. Right. So whatever you say should be those sentences that you can defend later. 
So when you prepare an introduction, the end should always be a kind of a punch, a punch where you come out with an achievement of yours. The moment you come out with an achievement of yours, the possibility is the next question will be related to that. If it is sports, if it is cricket, questions will come on cricket, not only about the cricket matches that you have played, but mostly from the world of cricket out there. Similarly, football. So whatever you say should be true, number one. And number two should be answers that you can always answer questions on. So you are one a scholarship, that's fine. But they may ask you about the scholarship. So achievement should be the end. The end, don't bring it in the beginning. Because the next question will be related to that. Our idea is to keep the questions confined to the areas that you are comfortable in. So that's the first part about yourself. The two questions that you have to prepare over there are an introduction and two, why do I want to do the particular course for which I am applying? Think about it, you know, like, uh, uh, let us understand, you know, like uh, uh, the students of Coimbatore, all of you will get a mock interview from me anyway, and I'm sure all the IMS centers will give you mock interviews. So it should not be an issue at all, but please remember, Prepare, prepare. Don't leave it to your skill to go there and say, I know what to say at that point of time. Some people are able to do it. And I'm not saying no, but please remember, preparation always helps. Prepare a good introduction for yourselves. Point number one. Two, why do I want to do that course? You know, you can always talk about business, BBA, why do you want to get into business, your background, family background could be business, a family background may not be business, but you can always have a role model, etc. Please remember, whatever you say, if you say I have a role model, and the role model is, let us say, somebody like Bill Gates, or somebody like um, Elon Musk, for instance, there are going to be questions on that person, you should be able to answer them. So every answer that you intend to give, you should prepare because you should think about once you prepare as to what questions they can ask me from this, right? If you say my favorite businessman is Elon Musk, I'm sure that they're not going to ask you about, uh, about uh, uh, Steve Jobs. I mean, they can ask you a different question on Steve Jobs separately, but that's nothing to do with this. Your introduction, should be in such a way that every single thing that you say, we should be able to defend it later. Like your father's profession. Your father is a doctor. They might ask you, why is it that you have not got into that field? Then you give an answer for that. The answer is, I was not interested. It doesn't look, look very nice. But think about the fact that you thought that, you know, I do not want to confine myself into the traditional fields of medicine and engineering. I want to do something different. And I decided to do business instead, something like that. So I'm not telling you what answers to give. Don't mistake me. Uh, I don't tell students what answers to give. It should come from your own unique backgrounds. So think about answers which are logical and which are relatable to your background. So a good introduction. Why do you want to do BBA? That's first part about yourself. Now, about yourself can also things like, what do you want to do in the future? Um, uh, you know, what is your ambition in life? So, I mean, those things you should be able to answer even without preparing. But anyway, those are questions related to you. All right. Two of them you need to prepare. Why do you want to do it? And two, introduction. And remember to always think about an achievement that you can bring in at the end of the introduction itself. And introduction should not be too long either. Okay. Remember that. The second part, of course, is academics which will be questions and BBA students will be inundated. Inundated means flooded, will be flooded with questions on your subject. In fact, I was surprised by the reporting my students were making to me after the interview. Uh, I don't know, most of you would have studied economics. You would have studied about the law of demand and supply. And you would also know that there are two goods, uh, sets of goods called elastic goods and inelastic goods, which of course all of you would know. Uh, one uh, where the demand uh, much fluctuates wildly uh, with the price of that is called uh, elastic and where the demand does not fluctuate even if the price goes up something like salt which everybody requires is inelastic now other than that you know they were asked questions on Biffen goods and uh, Weblen goods last year you know that I would expect a person to ask uh, 
person who has done economics in 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 uh, graduation level but they did ask a couple of possibly that person would have been an economic teacher so you don't know which panel you are getting a per person may have an area of expertise and they would ask you questions from that okay so webland goods i know i think you know what giffen and verbalin goods are uh, giffen goods are goods i mean these come from the names of people who propose this exemption to the demand supply theory Uh, theory of demand, and where a person, uh, uh, a professor called uh, uh, Giffen, had come out and said that in some commodities, when the price increase, people buy more of it. For instance, you know, in the term, uh, one example could be onions during uh, the time of shortage, when onion prices keep going up, people buy. more because they think that onion prices could go up even further so i would onion is not a perishable commodity it will stay for some time so rather than buying 1 kilo at 80 rupees 80 rupees itself is high but tomorrow it could become 100 i might buy 2 kilograms and store it such goods are called giffen goods my purpose is not to give you a i'm only telling you an example all right weblen goods are goods where luxury goods where higher the prices uh there would be demand for that there will be no high demand for that but there will be a certain market for that you know like the nike swoosh uh, for shoes and apple and mobile phones etc now uh they ask questions on that they can ask questions on account and see if you have studied that they can ask questions on pretty much everything which is related to your studies now for the rare people who actually have done science i don't think you would get questions on business or basic you can expect a lot of gk questions and if the the teacher is aware of science then the teacher could ask you even a couple of science questions no so don't think that they will not ask science questions because i am appearing for a bba exam or a law exam etc they could ask you but otherwise they're not going to ask you hardcore questions like beef and goods and web land goods and stuff like that if you are a non economic student but if you have done economics they could ask you the fact that giving an answer saying that sir i did not study it is fine if you did not study it but if they are very obvious uh, uh, topics biffen and weblen i can accept but in elastic and elastic i cannot so if they ask you what is law of diminishing marginal utility which i think comes in the first chapter of every damn uh, economic textbooks that you read uh, you should be able to state what it is so you know these are things that you are expected to know and there is nothing much you can do you just have five days and you are also preparing for your exams so you should be okay in that area is what i think right and then uh, accounting you could get questions last year they asked questions on diminishing sorry on um, Uh, deferred revenue expenditure they ask questions on the basic rules of uh, debit and credit the four statements of debit and credit and uh, they asked a few questions on provisioning they asked a few questions on uh, uh, on uh, they asked a couple of items and asked in which side of the balance sheet it comes etc and that is accounting questions that you can expect commerce questions Uh, i don't know whether they they may ask you a few questions on you know like things like reserve bank of india the rules of reserve bank of india and stuff like that and at the end there would be and maybe a section on current affairs and gk current affairs gk normally they would ask you names of ministers names of chief justices for law i'll come in a moment uh, the subject questions for law will not be based on your 12 standard questions alone they could be but they may ask you questions on law as well and most of them will be to do with most of the questions asked last year were to do with the constitution of india and some basic questions on law things like uh, um like uh, the principles of natural justice uh, uh, which you know the, the three principles of natural justice that or the alter impartium and all that so they ask you questions like that and uh, constitution is something that you should be fairly comfortable with you don't have to mug it up but you'll be fairly comfortable with they would ask you questions on that uh, somebody was asked a question on public interest litigation you know like uh, he was asked a question what is a pil can you talk about the pil in fact that was done in the micro presentation and the person talked about principles in law there's no subject called principles in law but he talked something he got to this is what i'm saying they gave the topic pil which is to do with public interest litigation and the person talked about principles in law and he talked about natural justice and he got in so at the end of the day uh, it's not as if you can do that for this year 
uh, he he was able to manage it he was able to 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 uh, get away with it with that particular interview panel okay so you can't do it so you need to remember that you need to brush up on the basics of your subjects and that will be the second part and the third part of course could be gk they could ask you who is the chief uh, justice who is the governor of the state um which other states going for elections which is going to happen right now who the chief ministers of the various states which are the major political parties in that state etc so you should be prepared for that and you can also be asked questions on basic general knowledge like farmers agitation i don't think they'll ask you too too deep questions into that topic you have only 10 minutes for the entire process remember so you have so many people to interview that they will not be able to give you any more time so all this is crammed into 10 minutes which means if you impress them in the first part which is about yourself you should be able to get away with a decent score in your interview the last lesson i'm going to give you is be confident absolutely confident if you do not know an answer to that don't look sheepish there you tell them that i don't say i don't remember if you have studied it say that sir i do not know but you should not come to a situation where you say i don't know to every question which is asked which obviously you will not because you are lucky this time because your exams are going to come up in the month of may so you guys are preparing for it and so you guys would be able to answer subject questions without a problem it's not like uh, people who go for other courses where they have done the course a few years ago and they would not remember anything about it so in this case you should be able to answer brush up on your general uh, awareness and gk Uh, they are only going to ask you very obvious topics uh, and and uh, not uh, very difficult ones uh, i don't think anyone had had a very difficult interview uh, please remember you're not being selected on interview alone you are being selected on the parameters of last year the parameters included the marks in 11th and then uh, because the 12th results had not come the same this year uh, and then they also looked at your test score plus your interview score and the overall impression that you create therefore um give a good interview normally people who give good interviews get selected uh but there are people who told me that they were very good in the interview and i know there were students who were able to give very good interviews but they were not selected but i think they have different yardsticks by which they take their students so don't get disappointed if you do not get through because there will be other opportunities for you but do your best over there be satisfied that you have given your best and that means preparation so in the next few days prepare for your interviews by one having a good introduction why do you want to do it and then think about your subjects and then think about a few questions on general awareness if you do this you should be able to do well so that's about it so please remember one thing what is that confidence i know you would be nervous anyone would be nervous if they are facing interview more so if you are doing it for the first time but believe me even if you are giving the 15th interview uh, for admission in your life you would still be nervous you will be nervous but try to downplay that nervousness try to answer the questions as sincerely as possible and please remember to look into the camera when you speak and please remember to keep a pleasant face smile if you can when the interview starts whatever the time is good morning good afternoon say it with a smile and even when they ask you to introduce yourself start with a smile and say it so that the face is pleasant even if you uh, do not know the answer to a particular question you say i'm sorry sir i do not know and smile right that makes a lot of difference not only to the interviewer but to your own confidence right so work on that so that's it that i have to say they'll give you the topics don't think that these topics are finite uh, at the end of the day but uh, uh, please remember you can go through the topics and you can prepare two or three lines on that but even if you get something which is not given uh, they will not be very difficult topics and you should be able to speak on that vaibhav yeah yeah uh, hi sir hello carry on so yeah i think uh, it was a very nice presentation from your end sir uh, so i think we have covered uh, all the three segments that we needed to cover one starting from how do you prepare for the entrance examination the test the mcq round 
secondly moving on to how do you prepare yourself uh, for the micro presentation uh, it's uh, how do you approach it what should your uh, you know your outlook be how you should be you know carrying yourself how, how you should structure your arguments and then of course the third part was the very important one as to how do you conduct yourself in a personal interview what are the small little details minute details that you need to you know work upon uh, while you are uh, giving the interview so thank you so much to anand sir and uh, i think we would wrap up the session here i have already put the google drive link for all the list of the topics for micro presentation topics uh, on the youtube uh, 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 you know on, on on the youtube page where this uh, where we are streaming right now so you can you can use that link from there and access all the topics be prepared for it start reading up uh, current affairs gk like uh, so said and something which i completely believe in you will have to start working uh, from now itself in case you know uh, again one very important thing uh, all the ims students uh, you will be getting your mock interviews mock personal interviews don't worry about it uh, it will happen sooner or later we will give preference firstly to those who would be uh, appearing for the 21st march attempt those who are appearing in say for example a little later a little while later uh, as in in say say for example in april or in june we will have your mock pis closer to your examination so don't worry we and that is the reason why we have collected your information so that your centers will have a, a know how as to when to approach you and it would be based upon your convenient time and the convenient time of your mentors that you would be getting a mock personal interview so that you get to learn as to how to uh, so you can implement what you have learned today in that mock interview and after that mock pi you can ask the mentor and the mentor will definitely be guiding you as to where did you go wrong and what are the things that you should be working upon so that two levels of you know uh, refining you and polishing you would be very sufficient be pleasant uh, work right now start working very sincerely towards your uh, you know entrance examination because getting to micro presentation and personal interview will happen only and only when you clear your uh, entrance test so on that note i think uh, we would wind up thank you so much for tuning in uh, i hope all of you got a lot of information a lot of help a lot of guidance that you were looking forward to uh, if you have some uh, comments that you would want to share with us uh, kindly put them on the youtube uh, page itself where we are streaming this uh, session and if in case you are an ima student and you still have some queries or questions please redirect them to the uh, telegram group of your respective batch we will be taking them up uh, there so wish you all the very best stay safe take care this is web of prakash signing off uh, goodbye